Hi, I'm going to review to you, with you today the um, Canon AE-1. Um, basically, what I want to review with you are the different parts of your regular standard SLR um, film camera. This is a 35 millimeter film camera. This is, like I said, a Canon AE-1. Um, and all the different parts that are associated with it. So all your cameras are going to be slightly different. Every camera has something you know, that's slightly different than the other um, because of the market and everything like that. But I just want to make sure that you understand where the general parts are. Now, we're going to start really slow and simple. This here, that is your viewfinder. So first thing we're going to do is we are going to take our lens cap off. Um, this particular lens cap comes off by pinching and pulling. And then this is your lens. You want to keep your lens as clean as possible. We have tools in the classroom to help you do that. Microfiber works really well. Just try to avoid touching it. If you notice on the outside edge, if you see that there's another piece of glass kind of coming over the top, um, your camera probably has something called a filter on top of it. Those can usually just unscrew. This does this one. Let's see. It has a filter on it. I'm going to take that off. So now we're down to just the lens. Um, so some photographers will often use these kinds of filters to get rid of glare or change the UV reading. Um, some photographers just put it on there and kind of forget that they had it. Um, this one is a UV for haze and things like that. It helps with reflections. Um, but some will put them on and forget they even have them on there. And then some photographers, if they lose a lens cap, will put these filters on. But this is a filter. Um, I prefer that you don't use them in my class until you kind of get a better feel because sometimes it can adjust your light meter or your light sensitivity. So that's your lens. Over here we have your viewfinder. And if you look, you can kind of see through it already. Let's see if we can focus a little bit, but you're looking through your viewfinder. Now, the important thing to understand about your viewfinder is that what you see here appears to be coming directly from here. It is not in reality, because if that was true, it'd be like we were looking through a telescope. Inside your camera, there are two mirrors. One mirror at a 45 degree angle is kind of coming up like this. The light hits my finger and actually I take that back it's coming up like this hits my finger bounces up and then there's another one up here that is bouncing like that and then bounces it out through this part so that you can can see what's directly coming through the lens and then into your eye now, the main parts of your camera we have here this is your button otherwise known as your shutter release this here is your advance. You can kind of hear that sound. It advances the film, and I'll show you that in a minute. So if you once you advance the film, if you've already done it, it'll kind of lock and not let you do it again. If I click on this, there's your shutter release. That's your shutter that you're hearing. Um, so that's why it's called the shutter release. It releases the shutter. Now, we also have a couple other readings up here. Um, this here is your shutter, and we'll get into that. Um, this particular camera has an auto and a lock and another setting as well. So if I put it on the L for lock and I push this, should not allow me, yep, it's not allowing me to take a picture. What that also does is it saves battery power, so it's kind of like an off. If you notice on your camera, you can't find an off button. Most likely it's the letter L instead. So we're gonna keep it in this auto here, but most of these functions, the rest of them are things that you're gonna do manually. Now your shutter, your shutter itself, is a measure of speed and time. We have 1,000. That's one one thousandth of a second, all the way down to B for bulb. These ones right here, where it's like a two and a one, these are the only two that really represent what they mean. The two is two full seconds. This is one second. This two actually means half. A quarter, an eighth, a fifteenth, a thirtieth, and a sixtieth. You'll notice right by the 60th, there's this little demarcation. Yours might be red, or it might be something different. 
but that 60 basically is a demarcation to let you know as soon as we go a little bit slower on that, you have to be very careful. You have to be very, very still. And then you can go up this way. Now I'm gonna show you what these look like. On your camera, this area here is a door. This door opens up to where you put your film in and then where all the magic is happening. So you have this little device. This device here helps you wind the film. So you can kind of see on this device, this one has a little arrow. That's to help you understand in which direction you are supposed to rotate it. So if you're taking pictures, when you're taking your pictures, you're clicking and you're happy, and then suddenly you go to take another one and it's stuck, that means you've hit the end of your film. Your film will usually come in about 24 to 36 different exposures. I roll the film for you in class, so it might be a little less than that. Um, it's just kind of how much I space out or not when I roll it for you. But having said all that, once you hit the end, your film is done and it's hit the end on this side. This also allow, this allows you to roll the film back into that little cassette over on this left-hand side. Um, after you push this button, there's a button, a special release button. You push that in and then you can rotate it. Now, how do you know when it's all the way back in there? Well, when there's film in here, you'll feel some tension. So much so that if I let it go, there's no film in there right now, but if I let it go, this would go, woo, would start rewinding back. So you would keep doing this until you finally feel a last little tug and then a release. And then you would know it's all the way back there. The other reason I'm showing you this device is because it's also how you open the back. Some of you might have some other locking mechanisms here. Some of you might have to open it in a different way. Some of you have a little trigger on the side here, but this one opens in the classic manner. So you kind of lift this up and then you pull. And if you notice, the whole thing pops up. To me, it kind of reminds me of like an ET head. So I often say like, you know, pull on your ET head. Now students get very, care like concerned about this but this is what you need to do you need to pull on it harder than you think you should so i'm going to pull on it pull it a little bit more and then the whole back pops open now this is where all the magic happens so on the inside here you'll notice this is where your film cassette goes if you notice when this et head is popped up i put the film in here and there's this little clasp the clasp will then sit around your film cassette and hold it in place. Now, the film will be sticking out a little bit. When you get your film, I'll pull it across this way and I kind of tug it into this spot. There's a little slider in here. I sit it in there and then what I do is I turn this. A couple things just happened. When I turn that, this revolves there's little teeth on this, the little teeth in your film will be pulled along with it and it'll pull that across here. And then I take my picture. Then I can take it again. You'll notice that there's something happening here. There's some things happening here. So what it's doing is it's pulling the film across and then it's preparing the next frame. Now this box here, that's your shutter. That's how your area that opens and closes to take your picture is never touch this avoid touching this the oils from your fingers any debris can start to muck up the works a little bit it also go in to where the lens is and it can really cause some problems so it's best to just avoid touching that at all nothing bad will happen to you or the camera it's just not necessarily something that you want to do you want to try to avoid to touch this but that rectangular shape you see that's where your image will be taken. That's why each of your negatives is that shape. The light through the lens is exposed through and then projected onto the back and then exposed onto the negative when it's sitting right here. It's important to keep this back closed at all times um, while you have your film in there until you are done and you've rewound it all the way. That's why it's rather difficult to open up the back because if any of your film gets exposed in a way that you don't want it to, it can ruin your film. Now, I showed you before on the top, that's your shutter, right? Right now we're at 250, which is 1 250th of a second. In camera speak, that's relatively fast. Um, 
we can go up to a thousand. And I want you to watch what happens to the door. I do that. I'm gonna now move it down to, let's go down to like an eighth of a second. Did you see that? <gasps> it opened. Now the funny thing is it was opening for you before. You just couldn't see it. It was that fast. Cameras, um, the speed of light, understanding how light is captured. It's more than our eyes can actually fathom. So, or actually respond to and see. So we need to trust and trust our equipment and understand that these are exposing at those times. So an eighth of a second, that seems fast, but in camera speak, that's rather slow. Um, so you can actually see that door opening. We're gonna move it down to one full second. And there it is. So that's your exposure time. That's your shutter. Your shutter controls how much time. So how does it change the picture? Well, if an object is moving, like I'm capturing a photograph of a car and I choose one second, I'm gonna get a lot of that car. So what that car is gonna look like, it's gonna look like a big blurred mess. If I take the same picture, the same car, but at one 250th of a second, the action will be frozen. So that's what your shutter controls. So it can interpret your picture how you want. Now there's a really cool one that I really enjoy, and this is called the bulb setting. That's your B. Now when I expose this, watch what happens. Watch my finger on the top. I'm gonna push it. My shutter is open, but it's still open until I release it. So your bulb is a very long time exposure, but it's up to you how long it is. This is the um, how you can do some of those really cool paintings, or I'm sorry, dry photographs that look like um, lines of light. Uh, the reason I was saying painting and drawing is because this is often referred to as painting with light or drawing with light. It allows you to make those really cool shots where you can write your name because what will happen is those that bits of time will be all exposed into one frame. So that's the other cool thing about photography is that you're capturing time in a way that we can't really see. It captures one moment and it could be a moment that's a second or hours all in one picture. This is also how they get those beautiful star shots that you see at night. Now the other thing I wanna show you, so that's your shutter, is your aperture. So I'm gonna kinda of close up the camera for a moment so you have a better idea. Now your aperture. Your aperture is the hole in your, on the inside of your lens. So if we look inside of our lens, it's gonna be kinda of hard to see because of the reflection and everything, but there's a hole inside of there. These numbers here that you see, there's like a 22 and there's this line, there's a 16, 11, all these numbers. This one goes all the way to 1.8. These numbers control the size of that hole. Now the tricky thing to understand though is that 22 is actually very, very small. 1.8 is actually really, really big. So you can try to remember this by thinking that 1.8, um, maybe think of it as a fraction, like one over 1.8, is actually really a pretty big thing. One over 22 is actually really pretty small. That's one way to think of it. I usually just think of it like apertures are crazy. Apertures are backwards. A tiny hole is a, is a big number. Um, what this controls is something called depth of field. Now depth of field is kind of what is in focus and what isn't in focus. That doesn't mean that you still don't have to use your focus um, knob here, but it does mean that you can change how the image looks. Now the larger the opening, the shorter the depth of field, meaning a short depth of field is when one, op one part is in focus, something else is not. Um, some of you may think of it as portrait mode, where the subject is in focus and everything behind them is out of focus. So that's a 1.8. Now a 22, 
or a very tiny hole will create a large depth of field where the foreground, middle ground, background, all of those things are in focus at the same time. The other thing to take in consideration is that this will let in a lot of light. This will let in not very much light. So that's why we have our shutter to help. So these two concepts, the amount of time the door is open and the hole that lets the light in, they work together. The cool part is when I move from 22 to 16, right? I'm gonna be letting in half as much light. Now, if you notice on my shutter, when I move from like 1 15th of a second to 1 8th of a second, I'm gonna let in double as much light. So if I know what kind of picture I want to take visually, I can use these two things together to make sure that the exposure or like the brightness is where I want it to be. So if I really want something where the foreground, middle ground, and background are all in focus, I can maybe set it to like a 16 and then maybe I can set it to like a quarter of a second to get enough light to compromise. So these two things measure light very similarly and they work together. Now, I wanna show you what that aperture looks like. So my favorite way to show you this is to pop open that back again. Here. Set it to bulb where I can control things, right? I'm gonna advance my film so I'm ready to pop it open and then I'm gonna open this up for you. There's my aperture, ah, it's so cool. So you can see right through, I'm looking through the camera, through the lens, and I can bring it down. Let's see, this is, this is gonna be a 1.8, so this is really big. Take a look at that, really big, lots of light. All right, now let's switch it out to a 22. Teeny tiny, let's see what that one looks like. Tiny baby. And you can see the mechanisms inside that make that work. So in actuality, if I keep your camera open, if I really want to see what we're looking at. I'm going to take the lens off. It's basically just a big old hole. You see that? So the shutter controls the light coming in through it. The lens focuses and changes how the light's interpreted. And then you have your lens here. There's my aperture, right? I can move that around. Get my hand in the way here. I can kind of change it. Can let me. It's not really letting me do it right now, but you can change it with those, those things. So that's the main parts of your camera. And yes, you can see your lens can come on and off. The cool thing about that is that your film is on the other side over here. So while you're in the field and while you're taking pictures, the film is protected. So you can change your lens while you still have film in that. Every camera has a different way of taking off their lens. This one here has a button that you push and then twist. Um, some of them have a large fat button over on the side. Um, but that is the main parts of your camera. What Next time we'll get into understanding your light meter, how that works, different battery compartments. There's batteries here. This one has a battery on the front. Um, and then how all, all of these things work. But again, big parts, shutter. Aperture, shutter release, okay? Thanks for checking me out.